What is up guys, John here, Jeff Head Fitness and Acceleration Fitness. And I got you five tips to gain strength, lose weight, and get jacked, all right? I think we're on episode number 43, if I can count. This week, I'm going to talk about the front squat, all right? So five tips to help you with your front squat. Now the front squat, if you don't know, I got a bar here to show you. You're gonna set up just like this, then you'll squat down and up. Now, it's a great movement for obviously lower body development and posterior chain, so the whole back's gonna be very involved. And also the core, the abdominal muscles are all going to be very involved because of the bar placement in front versus on my back. So, with that, there are quite a few problems that people have with them because of the positioning that they have to be in. A lot of people don't have the mobility or it's just a very kind of unfamiliar, you know, territory to squat in. Everybody's heard of back squats, right? Since you've been in ninth grade in high school, you've probably seen a back squat, squat with it on your back. But front squat's a little bit different, a little bit tougher, but once you kind of unlock the mobility there, you can find that they're extremely beneficial for all kinds of things. And they, I like them a lot just for their core involvement and changing the load. You're not gonna be able to load it up as much so you can kind of save your nervous system, save the fatigue side of things if you're a serious trainee. And for athletes, it's great as well because you can get a lot out of it, but you know, minimize the risk a little bit by having a little bit of less of a load. And you know, the more core involvement, which is great for athletes. Not saying back squats can't do them, but in conjunction, they are awesome versus just doing back squats like a lot of people. So, a couple tips here. Number one, if you cannot get to this position, there's a couple little hacks that you can do. And the first one being taking a lifting strap. So this is just a lifting strap that you would use for deadlifts or shrugs or rows or anything like that if you have a poor grip. I'm not gonna get into that, but anyways, what you're gonna do here, is you can take it like this, then wrap this bad boy right around there, then it creates just a little strap so you can lift the bar right like this, okay? So that's gonna help out if you do not have the mobility to get there. So number one hack is using a lifting strap. Now, number two, hat is a lot of people say their wrists are mobile enough or a lot of people when we front squat they're having trouble with that you know they're, I can't bend my wrist like that well the thing is it's not actually your wrist in most cases it's going to be your lats and the mobility here right so all this in here is kind of tight and not allowing you to get into this position okay so lats on your back everybody knows what the lats is the wings right so those are gonna be a little bit tighter and not allow you to get here. So if you find yourself, you know, your elbows are down here and it's really putting a strain on your wrist, it's not usually your wrists that are immobile. It's gonna be your lats. So stretch the crap out of your lats. So um, we'll link up the video, but I put a great video up on just lat mobility and some of the stretches you can do. But probably my favorite is elevated child's pose. So basically on a box like this kneeling, it's gonna really stretch there. And then another great one I'll show you here is just you come to a bar kind of like that. Can't really do it because I don't have a lot of room here. But basically, you just get your elbow up here and stretch the crap out of it there, and that'll help out as well. And you can feel that up in the tricep as well. But that's not really where we're focusing. Most most people that I work with, it tends to be lat mobility. So that's number two: stretch your lats and try to get, gain more mobility that way versus folks at your wrists. Number three, now you can stretch your wrists and that will help a little bit. It will give you a little more flexibility, but I kind of see it personally as like a band-aid to fixing the bigger problem. So it's not a bad idea to stretch your wrists just for overall, you know, flexibility and mobility in, in everything. But, you know, the typical here, place it on a box. There's some ones in the PVC you can do as well. But I'm not really gonna get into that too much. But that is my third point is the wrists, kind of going with number two, the wrist. I have more of a band-aid to the real problem of the lats, okay? So stretch out your lats. And going back, actually, another great way to stretch out the lats, and I've seen some kind of research that backs us, is doing movements that kind of involve that eccentric motion, that eccentric stretching, heavy movements like that, 
can actually help with that as well. And for me, when I started doing a lot of dumbbell pullovers, so heavy pullovers, laying on a bench, that helped a lot with my mobility, just being able to get into that position. And it transferred over my front squat without me even trying and just building the strength. But there, you know, in my last and Stratus, but also it, it kind of freed things up a little bit, so that helped a lot as well. So it's not always just stretching, it's picking exercises that can benefit you in other ways, right? So it's the same as doing like a deep lateral lunge that's gonna strengthen your lower body, but it's also gonna open things up in your legs as well on your hips to kind of free things up, but also strengthen at the same time. So those kind of exercises are gonna be great, you know, kind of a double-edged sword, you know, obviously strength, but then anesthetics, but then also freeing things up, and making it a little bit more mobile. So that was kind of four or five, I'll roll into three, but that's okay. So number four here, kind of a little tip, once you get to the top like this, what you're gonna do is kind of pull in a little bit, and it kind of locks that upper back and makes it a little bit tighter. You're gonna kind of feel things engage that you normally wouldn't if you just had it here, and that kind of helps keep the bar there. So if you can see here, when I come underneath the bed, Here's just normal straight ahead. But if I pinch in just a little bit, personally I feel locked in tight. It's hard to see because you know it's more of a feel thing, but when you go here, it just locks everything in tighter, that's you're less apt to kind of let them drop as it gets heavier and you get a little fatigue. So that is number four. I'm actually gonna give you six out of this because there's a lot of things you can do. Number five is going to be keeping tightness in your full torso, and that's gonna come with bracing. So once you get deeper into strength training, there's so much down the road of bracing that you can kind of play with, and it takes a long time to really good get, it, get good at it. I mean, I've been doing this for, you know, lifting seriously for six or seven years, and just within the last two, I would say, when I started focusing more on powerlifting, I really realized the importance of bracing and how much it actually helps. So taking, you know, that breath in, pushing out of those that, pushing down with the diaphragm, getting everything tight. The tighter you are in this midsection, the better off you're gonna be. And if I'm braced here, here, I'm gonna be less apt to let them fall down because everything's gonna be a little bit tighter versus just kind of, you know, getting under the bar, stepping out, just dropping right into it versus taking my time to set up, and getting everything tight in this midsection. Okay, so that's something you're gonna have to play with. There's not, you know, it's one of those things where you just have to keep trying things and keep trying different ways. Personally, I like to think of pushing my ribs down, pushing my diaphragm down. You know, I know other people have different ways of doing it, but that's just what works for me best, how I visualize it, and that helps me kind of keep everything tight there. But just kind of play around with it and see what works for you. And once you find that, you're gonna feel yourself being able to stay upright, one with your elbows, but two with the rounding of the upper back. Because it's here, the weight is distributed up here, so it's gonna to wanna to pull you forward a little bit and round that thoracic spine. And we don't really want that. It's not the worst thing ever, it's a lot better than you know, lumbar, but at the same time, we want to stay upright with it, keep that flat, neutral position, and here, it's going to pull you there, but if I'm braced properly, it's going to help a lot in keeping myself upright. So that's number five, and then I'm going to give you number six as well, and that is going to be where you position the bar. Okay, so it should be uncomfortable when you have it in this front rack position, right? It shouldn't be down here on the delts, the, the anterior delts or the front delts, and even I've seen it kind of roll down on the biceps and some guys. When I started first you know, lifting, I would have that problem as well, because I wasn't setting the bar far enough back. Really, it should be uncomfortable up on your collarbone area, and almost in your throat. Like, if you're doing it right, you shouldn't be able to really talk to someone as you're doing it, because it's gonna be kind of right up here. It's gonna feel a little uncomfortable at first, but once you get used to it, it's gonna be a lot more beneficial, and it's gonna allow you to stay upright. I remember the exact rep that I set the bar higher than I usually did, and I was just stayed so much better, like on an upright, you know, upright, and it just helped so much with that positioning. So that is very important. And then I'm actually gonna throw a seventh tip at you. So this is not five tips anymore, this is a seventh tip, because this one just popped in my mind that I need to tell you guys this as well. It's using zombie squats. So this one, I, I don't remember exactly where I 
heard about it first, but I know quads like Rob, I don't actually know his full name, I know it's just his <laughs> social media name, but powerlifters, quads are like this big around. Check him out, at quads like Rob. He's amazing. I saw him in at the Arnold last year, and that's kind of how I started following stuff. And he uses these a lot. And basically, zombie squat is you go straight up, have the bar resting here, so you take it up, just like a front, front rack, uh, front squat, and then you extend your arms up, and it forces you to stay in that good position, that upright position. Otherwise, it's going to roll right down your arms, so you're going to lose it, right? So instead of just squatting here, you're going to come out like this, okay? So that is going to help a lot with positioning. And I'm actually, I'm just going to—I just uploaded a video today as well on that, just on that technique. And I'll, I'll link that up as well, so you, can, you guys can check that one out. But that's going to be really beneficial to help with position. Just be careful of that one. Don't go super heavy. And if you're in a spot that you can't really drop weight, be very careful so you don't get yourself in trouble or kicked out of your gym by breaking the floor. So because you don't want to lose it on the floor like that and break the floor. I don't think the gym owner would like that very much. So just be careful with that. Um, and stay you know, relatively light. Like I was doing it today, and I was only at about, I think the highest I got was 60% of my actual one rep front squat because it is a lot tougher to hold here and stay in a third position because it doesn't allow you to round at all. You have to stay completely upright or else you'll lose it. So those are my tips, guys, for the front squat. Check that or check those out. Try them out. And you know, give a shot. Good. Let me know if you have any other questions, guys. That is pretty much everything on the front squat, upper body, and positioning wise. There's some lower body stuff as well, but that's just general squat stuff. So if you have any questions, guys, hit me up on social media. Job hit fitness on pretty much everything. Um, Facebook and Instagram. So I do a lot more on my Facebook page. And obviously, YouTube, you're here. Hit like, subscribe if you like what I'm putting out. So I know you care. Then also Twitter, start to do a little more on there. John Pep 2 I'll put that on the screen here and link it up in the description. Other than that, guys, have a great day. Have a great week. And I will see you guys next week. Keep on chasing it.